Thank you, Dean. Thank you very much. Uh, what we're going to do tonight is just kind of a, a tour, underwater tour, and we're going to look at some creatures and see how creatures become either better hunters or perhaps even better at not being hunted. Okay, there's kind of two here, and, they, and they, the lines cross. Now, if, if you're interested in this and you have friends that would like to see the presentation, you can get it uh, online, right? At the Alliance for Science. At the Alliance for Science. So that, it's, uh, it'll be there if you like it. Well, let's start out. We've got uh, 1,247 slides here. So <laughs> Now, what we're going to do is uh, what I'm going to show you some uh, pictures that were taken over the course of the last oh, couple of decades on scuba. So this is, a scu this is scuba gear. And if you look at this, you'll, you'll see that uh, there's a, a, what we call, a, as scuba divers, we call this a breathing thing. <laughs> and so you breathe through that, all right? This tells you, this will tell you, uh-oh, you, you've been underwater too long. You've got to go up, all right? This is a compass, so you can hopefully find the boat. And then this is a, a vest that uh, you can put air into to, as a flotation device on the surface. Okay? And uh, here's, here's another view of this from the side. And you see the tank, how that fits on. And then the other thing we're going to need will, will be a camera. And this was, for the most part, the, the, camera that, uh, the type of camera that uh, was used in taking these pictures. So it's a little digital camera in a case and with a strobe light. Right? So there's a strobe on here. All right, well, now if you dive, one of the cardinal rules of diving is you should have a buddy. You always want to have a buddy. That's so if the sharks come, right, the only thing you have to do, you don't have to outswim the shark, you just have to outswim the buddy. All right, so that's, but you need a buddy, all right? So you have to be careful when you pick buddies because you'll get one like this every once in a while. <laughs> this is the kind that I usually get, okay? But what you're looking for is somebody here who will help you out, notice a really nice buoyancy off the, off the surface of the, of the ocean. And here is another buddy of mine that, uh, who's a very good photographer. And you notice his buoyancy, how he's not going to be kicking the reef. So he's holding his camera. He's holding his camera there. Whoops, excuse me. He's holding his camera in his hand uh, here, right here. And he's looking around. And, and this is the last two people. Mick and Ann are, are both uh, superb divers, and they both have, I, I'd say between the two of them, have probably a 1,000 dives, so they're experienced divers. I started my diving career in 1970 in Puerto Rico, as Dean mentioned, because we were doing uh, collections of biological samples. So I've, I'm happy. I'm working on my 2,000th dive now. So I, I begin to feel like a prune, so I don't know. Uh, now, can we? OK, there we go. All right, well, now let's take a look at, at, at see some of the underwater creatures. Now, let's start out with some that really aren't camouflaged. And there's reasons they don't have to be. Uh, sometimes you'll find things that are big enough and swim fast enough and are mean enough that they really don't need camouflage. And a tarpon is one of these. You'll see these at night when you dive. Uh, they get, oh, six, seven feet long. They're beautiful at night. Their scales are like silver dollars. And what they'll do if you're, if you're night diving, you generally have a light. And if you have a light, the tarpons use the, the light to hunt by. So it's, it's a little bit ecologically strange, but nevertheless, that's what they do. All right, now, this is the scourge of the Caribbean now. This is a lionfish. And these were introduced into the Caribbean and the Atlantic by aquarium uh, spills in Florida. All right, very few. And within 10 years, they've taken over the Caribbean. I mean, they're, they're, if you go diving now, you'll see. And they're finding them down to like 200, 300 feet. So they're, they're an Indo-Pacific fish, and they're, they're toxic. You see these, spi you see these uh, spines up here. They carry a venom. So these guys don't really need camouflage, in a sense. They'll just say, OK, here I am. If you, if you want to come on, come on. You know, bring it. <laughs> so this is it. Now, they've been hard on some species like this little, uh, this is a juvenile drum. And that's a little fish about, this one's about this big. And when they grow up, they get to be about that big, right? How big is that? Oh, it's about a uh, foot and a half. They'll get to be a foot and a half. This one's about uh, two inches, OK? Now, uh, here's, uh, this is uh, an indigo basslet. And these, these are just now, I'm showing you some that are, have color. But there's no apparent real 
camouflage on these guys. And mainly, uh, you'll see some uh, angel fish. These are, this is a gray angel and some French angels and a queen angel. And they basically are just adroit swimmers and, and they're, they're reef eaters. They'll, eat, they'll chew on coral. So they don't seem to be too concerned about hiding or anything like that. They're out in the open. That's just what you get. All right, now, these guys are, are very interesting. They're called nudibranchs. And nudibranchs are little, well, snails without shells, essentially. And you'll see them here. They just sit out on the rocks, and they're very, very plain to see. And they're brightly colored. So you'd think, well, this isn't too good a, a plan, because they move like snails without <laughs> shells. Right? So they're slow. All right? But they're also toxic. All right? And I think over generations, fish learn this, and they'll, they'll look at this and say, oh, I don't want anything to do with you. All right? Now, they come in some beautiful colors. They, they generally all have, will have these little two horns here and this little fluff patch in the back. That's how you can tell they're a nudibranch. But they come in, in a vast variety of colors. They, again, are about an inch and a half to two inches long. Now this is, this is interesting, this is an egg case. So this is an egg case from a, a marine creature. And it looks almost like a rose, it's very, it's very pretty. And uh, these you'll, you'll see occasionally in, in the ocean, especially in the Indo-Pacific. Well here's, a, here's one that we're getting into camouflage. This one is camouflaged to, to look like a pile of junk. <laughs> and there it is. So here's, this is in one of the museums in DC. Now let's, let's get to a group that really does start to use camouflage. And these basically are predators, right? Now, if you look at this, can you, can you see any color pattern on this guy? And I want you guys to ask questions if you have questions. Don't, don't wait till the end. Go ahead. Well, <laughs> he was actually talking to me. <laughs> OK, OK. Well, if you look at this, you'll see that they're a little bit, they're darker on top and light on the bottom, all right? Now, think about where they live. If you look up in the ocean, if you're down in the ocean and you look up, the surface looks very bright. It's extremely bright. In fact, it's almost white right, when you look up. Well, if they're swimming above you and you look up and you see it, they're camouflaged. If you get above them and look down, they blend into the, into the coral pretty well from the dark side on the top. And so this is a, a pattern that you see over and over again. Mainly, you'll see this in sharks. Now, this is a... This is a male uh, Nassau reef shark. And you can tell there's two little appendages here that are called claspers. If you ever see those, they're males. All right? that's, that's characteristic of male sharks. The females don't have those. All right? And these guys get to, uh, as you see, the, the diver is very interested. I think he's interested in getting out of there. <laughs> but uh, what, what you'll see with these, with these guys is these are not particularly, not particularly mean sharks, if you will. They're, they're sharks, but uh, they'll, they'll be in the water, and generally, if they see you, they go. But they'll get to uh, 10 or 12 feet long. And these are, you see these in the Bahamas a lot. This is a bah Bahamian shark. Um, what they do now when they feed these sharks, you know, they'll, they'll feed sharks, which is, there's a controversy about whether you should do that or not. But nevertheless, they feed sharks. And what you can do with these, Bahamian sharks, it's amazing. They'll swim up, and you'll see a feeder. And the shark will swim up, and the feeder will grab the shark right by the nose. And they go docile. They just go almost limp. And you can take a shark this size, and just put them up like this, and bring them down, and then shove them away, and they'll go and off they swim. Now, I just wonder who the first one was that did that. <laughs> I, I, I can see it now, but uh, it, it really is uh, amazing. And here again, here you see the dark and, and the light a little clearer. That's a, a female. Females are generally bigger than the males. Here's again. And so these are apex predators. And, and again, they use this color scheme. Let me just see. You know. And when they come in to hit, what they'll do is their eyes 
have a membrane. So when they come in, they'll roll, and then this membrane will shut. So it's weird to see when, when you're near this, you know, because their eyes just go shut and they go opaque, and then they'll come in and hit food, and then they'll come out, and they're, what they're doing is protecting their eyes. And I think it's not, it's not something they're doing consciously. I think it's just, it's, it's just like you blink when you sneeze. It's one of those deals. All right, now here's one that, that his camouflage didn't entirely protect him. Because you see somebody took a nibble out of his, out of his dorsal fin. And that's a, that's a female too, so that's, that's a female that got bitten. All right, now these are rays, and this is a southern stingray. And they'll get to, to be about three or four feet across. All right, and if you, you remember the, the Australian naturalist who tried to ride one of these and didn't come out of it too well. And the reason he didn't come out of it too well, let's see, okay, is right there. Now see that, that on some of the, it's not really toxic, but it's a very sharp spine. And they'll, they'll whip the tail if they're, if they're being chased or harassed. So that's the danger of these. Otherwise, they're, they're not very, not a dangerous animal. But dark on the top, let's see, dark on the top. And then this is a spotted eagle ray. And these get to be maybe five feet across. They're a beautiful animal. And they almost look like a dog. They have a, they have a very dog-like face, if you will. And they can get very uh, chunky. And they have a, notice they have an extremely long tail. And when they, when they uh, swim, you know, they fly. It's really neat. They just fly like this. Yeah? Well, it's the same thing. If you get above them and look down, they're, they're pretty camouflaged if you're looking down on them, right? So it's, it's just this pattern. Uh, I have a friend who's, a friend. Well, the coral will be dappled, generally. This, this, they'll come into, uh, let's see if I got one here. See, right here. If you see where he's heading off, you'll see it'll start to blur a little bit, and, and they, they really are getting some protection up in here like this. But I think uh, on, on these, I think that the concentration is the dark on top, white on the bottom, that's the, the predominant thing. The rest of it's just kind of fluff. I have a friend that does some pretty good photography, and he, he, transformed, uh, he transformed these dots into an alphabet, and just random letters. It, looked, it actually looked pretty neat. All right, so let's take a look. And here you can see the white. You see the bulk of the animal. And here, you see here, too, the, the spots are a little bit more muted. Right? Turtles do the same thing. So this is, a, this is a hawksbill turtle. And you can see light. OK, light on the bottom and dark on the top. And here you can see, in this one, it works pretty well. So he's got some, he's got some uh, markings, if you will, as well. Like the, you know, like the, the uh, eagle ray did in a sense, but here they really blend in. It's really neat. Now you'll find some that are on vacation, and so you'll see them swimming. And to swim a little easier, they'll they'll put fins on and swim with their fins on. <laughs> I, th I think you can see that. So you, so, so so you'll see this every every once in a while. You'll you'll notice that one of these guys is swimming with fins, but you don't see that too often. <laughs> Now, here, let's, here's some where things are starting to use their color to blend into their environment, e even more so than the ones I've showed you before. And these are mostly, for the most part, uh, they're avoiding being eaten. The ones I showed you before are colored to make them better predators. OK, here, now, uh, you see these little Nemos? Here's, here's, uh, and these little Nemos will hang out in, in coral soft coral that's the same color that they are. And you find this quite often. Right. And these are cardinal fish. And they, they hang out around this kind of mottled uh, sponge. I guess this is a sponge. And uh, again, they're using their color to protect themselves. Right. Now this, this is guy's a, a grouper. And you see him out in mid-water, and he's, he's fairly uh, he stands out fairly well, but you get him down on the cert on here, where he's just barely dark on top and light, and he blends in very nicely to his environment because they swim around on sandy patches. All right. 
Now I'll show you some here that just blend in. These are this is a little little uh, grouper, and this is uh, if you see this. Let me get something. Okay, you can see the pinchers on this guy. This is a, a little shrimp, but blending in with his color. Okay, now this is a this is a Nassau grouper, and these these are very common in the Caribbean, and they come in a lot of different color patterns, depending on how old they are. But you can always tell a Nassau grouper, okay, but you see that little black rectangle? They all always, and it's the only fish that has one, they always have a little black rectangle there, so you can notice them. Okay, and this, this is a, a puffer fish. Now this, this one's a parrot fish that's settled in for the night. And what they'll do is they'll spin a, a cocoon of kind of, it's almost like mucus around them, and they'll sleep inside that cocoon. And so this guy's fast asleep. It's in here, but the cocoon protects him from, from, other, from predators. You have to be careful not to touch these guys because if you break, if you break through the, the cocoon, then the bacteria can get in, they, they can become ill. Right. Okay, and here's another little puffer fish. Again, blending in to hide. Here's a lizard fish looking not too happy about the whole thing. Okay, and, and you'll see them, you'll see them generally in pairs, just hanging out on rocks that look somewhat the same color as them. All right, now here's an interesting one. Does everybody see the everybody see the fish? Got it? Okay, there's the fish. All right. Now this is called a peacock flounder, and they are really a neat animal because when they're born. Their eyes are on each side of their head, okay, one on each side. And then within a very short period of time, the one eye, and it's generally the port or left eye, will just migrate to the top of their head. So they end up with two eyes on the same side. Right? And this fin, that you'll see a little, there are a couple of these, but there's a fin here that's really a pectoral fin that becomes a dorsal fin because of this migration. Now, the thing that's neat about these guys, is they'll swim along and they'll become the color of their environment as they swim. Now think about that, it's kind of neat because it, they, they'll change colors as they go, but look where their eyes are. So their eyes are looking up, there's no way they're doing this visually. So what they must have is sensors that are sensing the color, the sensors transmit and controls the changing of, of the color of, of the fish. Here's another one. This is just a couple of uh, peacocks. And see, they'll, they'll change to a really variety of colors depending on what's around. And here's one out. And you can see again, here's that, what used to be a pectoral fin is now on the top of the body. Yeah. yeah. Just, just because I think they've evolved that way as a survival technique. So, you know, a million years ago, it happened to one of them. And the one, the one that had happened was, was quite a ladies' man. And so before you knew it, there's a whole bunch of these guys. But it, this takes time. This takes time. But that's essentially it. It's evolved slowly. And there are a lot of fish like this. If, if you go into a restaurant, you'll see sometimes Dover sole. Same, same deal. So a, a lot of flounder and sole will do this. It's not just common to this guy. Yeah? You know, I don't know. Uh, you, I think some of them can see in color, but I wouldn't swear to that. Right? It, it, judging on what they look like and, you know, the way they've evolved, you'd think they probably would. And here's just the two eyes. And here's one out swimming. Okay, now these are cuttlefish, and they're related to squid. And you see how the cuttlefish will pretty much blend in, and they'll actually they'll get some sand on them and carry it. All right, so they're a very interesting animal, and they're quite smart, and they, they come in several sizes and shapes. These are all cuttlefish. And you see they kind of, they kind of glow. 
And if you put light on them, they really do glow. It's, it's really, they're beautiful to see. But you can see where they're, here's their, the, their eye, and they, they would swim in that direction. Okay, they don't swim with their fingers first, they swim the other way, like that. And they'll line up and look at you. <laughs> and these guys are about a foot long. These are good sized little animal. Now these are calamaris on the hoof. Right? So if if you if you like calamari, this this is one. All right, these are squid. Now squid are neat because they'll look at you, and if they don't like what's going on, they'll flash and go a different color completely. So if if you look at them, they'll they'll change color a little bit, and they again will swim in that direction. Okay. And there's there's two that weren't too happy. You see how they've they flashed now and gone to a light color. And here's one that's really unhappy. Now what's neat about them? If you go in if you go in the water, find a nice sandy spot and kneel down and you see some squid. If you blow air into your into your mask and blow bubbles, they'll line up big to small, okay, and they'll come about from me to you, about three, four feet away, and they'll just look at you. And they, you blow that, and you, you blow, and they'll back up a little bit, and then they'll come. And you can, you can play with squid's heads for 20 minutes. <laughs> and it's, it's really fun until, until you realize that maybe they're, they're making you do that, <laughs> and you're not making them do that. Now, can anybody see what, see what this is? Oh, maybe. What do you got? Like I think you're right. It's an octopus. You can see his eye here, and he's living in this pipe. Okay. Now let me show. Th th these are really amazing guys. I swam upon this thing, and this octopus lived in lives in that bottle. Okay. So he he if he gets scared, he'd zip right into that bottle and stay there. So. So he's a little guy. Now they get a little bigger. And what they do, it's really neat. Again, here's his eyes and uh, his head, brain material, and they've got eight arms. And if you look at them, what they do is they spread out to look bigger, right? And if they get angry, they'll also flash, they'll flash colors too. So let me show you how this guy is starting to flash, keeping spread out to be big, and there he's flashed. Okay? And these guys are are wonderful at, at hiding, but they're hiding to be better predators because if you, if you come across an octopus at night, which is generally when you see them, they're night hunters, they'll take a fish and you can practically bang them on the head and they won't leave that fish. They'll just go along the rocks to get out of the way. But, but they're, they're basically thinking in terms of being a hunter in this thing. They're not getting color to, okay, to uh, avoid anything. Now, here's one that's fully spread out and fully colored. And they get to be, see, a fairly good size. This is a Caribbean one. Now, watch this guy now as he swims along on the bottom. This is at night. And he goes along and see how he's changed color to match the sand? Okay, and then there was a kind of a pipe set up that was with some junk around the bottom. And he went there and he blends right in. I think that's really quite amazing. I mean, he's really disguised himself there. Now, in that case, he's hiding from us. Okay, okay everybody got the fish? <laughs> everybody got him? Okay. Right there. And here's, this is his mouth. Sorry. Now these are scorpion or rockfish, and these ones I'm showing you now are Indo-Pacific. And what you see, there's maybe 20 varieties of these things in the Indo-Pacific. And what's wild about them is they're here's a fin on the bottom of this guy. Here's his tail. Here's his mouth. His this fin here. They use them on the, on the sand, and they actually kind of walk along. So they 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 swim. They they're swimmers, but they like to walk on the bottom. So you get in these Indo-Pacific waters in, in, 
Indonesia. And what you'll see is, I mean, about 80% of the stuff you see is walking on the bottom. It's really kind of wild, all right? Now, notice the color of the sand here, too. It's, it's kind of black. It's because it's, it's uh, made out of lava. So this is crushed lava. So there's a lot of volcanic activity in this part of the world. And so you get a, just an entirely different kind of sand, not the white sand. Here's his mouth. There he's out a little bit so you can see him. And these guys on their dorsal fins are, are, little, are toxic. They won't, certainly won't kill you, but they are toxic. So these guys have a poison. But these, these fellas really do uh, use their, their uh, coloration and skin texture to hide. They're, they're amazing hiders. So you can, you can be diving along and put your elbow down and then look and see, but whoa, there's one of these things right beside you and you just don't see them. Are they uh, camouflaged to the amateur or to not be eaten? Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think both in this case. I think both. And, uh, okay, so this is part of the fish, this scaly stuff, and here's his tail. This is his head. Now, they're not, uh, they're not a happy fish. But, so, uh, and uh, I didn't mean, <clears throat> I wasn't trying to be facetious to you. I'll, I'll come back a little bit later and show you one that's definitely adapted for hunting. Okay? And here's one that's really mad. He's just not happy. <laughs> so I took the film, you know, the shot, and I said, all right, all right. And swam away. <laughs> okay, and then here's, here's one that's more ornate. Let's see. And these guys are generally about a foot long, maybe a little longer. And then, see here, here's one with fins that are adapted for walking on the bottom. Now, if they're little, and this one was maybe two inches long, they haven't gotten all this body coloration yet, and they'll be kind of a pure color. And you'll even see there's a, there are pygmy scorpion fish, and I, that's a pygmy scorpion fish, and that guy's about three quarters of an inch long, and is an adult. Now, can you see this? This is a crocodile fish. And this is one where I, I'll truthfully tell you, I, I went down and got the picture, and then I asked myself, I, I went click, and I said, well, why are you here? <laughs> because look at the mouth on this guy. <laughs> they look just like a crocodile, and he goes back to here. And they're maybe four to five feet long, these guys. Now, I, I would say, See on this one that probably it's dual function. He's hiding, but there's not much that's going to come after him. So basically, he's using this to be a better predator. Okay. Now, anybody, everybody knows what that is? It's a lobster. Yeah, it's a it's a Caribbean lobster. So they don't they're not like the main lobsters with a with a, a big claw, but they they rather are just a tail on the body and then too long. Tentacles. And here's a couple of them out. So I have friends that always dive with a with a quarter pound of butter in their in their BC just in case. Now see what this one is? Yeah, here's here's his crabbiness. And they look like this. That's a channel crab. And channel crabs will have a, a body that's maybe a foot across, yeah. and then their, their uh, arms, pinchers, are maybe two to three feet long. So they're a pretty big animal. And then here's a little, I'll show you just a, I've got a series here of a couple of, <laughs> excuse me, a couple of little crabs. So let's just take a look at those. And you'll see that most of these are trying to blend in. They're just trying to blend into their environment. This one actually is not even trying to blend in. It's just there. This one is, though. And you see him up in here. Now, this one, it's called a hairy crab, and they, they look like they're made out of pipe cleaners. Right? If you'll notice, all the hair on his arms here, and here's one that's out and around. So you see a lot of variety in these, in these animals. And here's, this is now a sea urchin. 
This is a sea urchin. And this crab lives on top of the sea urchin and uses the sea urchin spines as defense. So this is a case where there's not much of a color change or anything like that They're in, in those terms, but they, they just dig right in there with the spines and use the spines as, as protection. Here's a little shrimp. I mean, it really is a shrimp. <laughs> now, this is an interesting guy. Does everybody see the crab here? Yeah. Okay. You see his, his claws here. And what he's, what he's allowed to do, he's allowed this sponge material to grow on him. And this is called a decorator crab. And you can see the, these are sponges, and here's the crab. And here's a view from behind on one of these guys. So they're a good-sized crab, but they, they let this uh, sponges grow on them for just visual protection. Okay. Okay, everybody got the fish? Got it? It's right there. <laughs> okay. Now, this is called a trumpet fish. Okay, and there's a, there's a big one, there's a huge one. The trumpet fish are about two feet long, like this. And they line up and hide. It's amazing. And they're doing this now to stay out of the way, but these guys are good hunters. So they'll come out of, these, they'll come out of this vertical stance and go after things, which you'll see them do occasionally. Um, they like to be vertical on these things, so let's see if we can make sure we see these guys. Nose down. There's his nose. Okay, there's his tail. Got him? What did you say it's eating? Other little fishes? The main, yeah, they're fish eaters. Here's one. But you see how they like to line up vertically? And they're fun to photograph because they sit there. And here's one out just being a trumpet fish, not trying to look like a coral. Now, they come in all kinds of colors. They come in yellow, come in plaid. <laughs> this, is a, this, this is one that's found in the lakes of Scotland. <laughs> no, this, this, guy, this guy comes in plaid. Here's one that's striped. And let me just show you a couple of things that show you how much they really do like to line up. Now, we saw him hiding with the coral, and here he's lined up vertically, too. But they'll line up horizontally, too, if they can find something to line up with. And it's just, that's their nature. You know, you asked me about the eyes. Same with these guys. They've evolved into this behavior. And they line up with each other. And they'll co-hunt with other fish. So here's the yellowtail that they, they'll line up, and whichever one gets some, some food, you know, hits a another fish, the other one will come in and share the feast. Okay, and this is, a, this is kind of a common behavior. These are called razor fish, and you see they line up vertically as well. They like to line up. And here's some razor fish at night. Okay, now, we'll, we'll do some here where the fishes are, and whatever, I think I've got some eels here to show you too. Well, they'll just hide. They're basically just hiding in a nook or cranny. So you see these guys in among the coral. And you see this? Got, everybody's got the fish? Okay. He's just hiding and looking. And there's a little puffer fish taking a look. And this guy actually <laughs> was hiding, was living on a sandal. There, there was a sandal at the bottom of the, of the sea, and he, that was his home. And this is a little goby. And these gobies are maybe anywhere from a half an inch to three quarters of an inch long. And so he's hiding in a little crevice in a brain coral. And now there, that's for protection. Okay, that, this is one that definitely is for protection. Now this is, this is a neat fish. This is called the toadfish. All right? And you see these whiskers. They'll actually they'll, they'll hide in a little cavelet like this. And then they'll take these whiskers and they'll go like this. And they'll wiggle, the, they'll wiggle their whiskers. And the little fish will come in. They'll check in, but they'll never check out. 
Okay, so they're a very effective hunter, but they do it by, again, presenting kind of bait by just these appendages on their body. And this is a, this is a mantis shrimp. And a mantis shrimp, are, he's hiding here, but they're pretty good hunters. You see these, these claws here? If they, if they grab you, and they can, here's one out. And these guys are maybe five to six inches long. But if they grab you, if they get you by the knuckle, they can break a knuckle. They have an extremely powerful grip with those, with those pinchers. It's an extremely grip, strong grip. So these are basically, it's, you know, it's a man-eating shrimp. <laughs> all right, here, this is a banded coral shrimp. And you'll see these, these guys all over the ocean floor. And what they'll do is they'll come up to, this is an eel. They'll come up to the eel and they'll clean the eel and they'll clean his gills and even inside their mouths. And they're, they're called cleaner shrimp. And that little goby inside the, uh, the brain core was also, is also a cleaner fish. So you get what's actually called cleaner stations. And you'll see these big groupers will come in to a station and they'll stop and open their mouth. And these little fish and shrimp will come out, clean them up, and then they'll swim away and the fish will shut its mouth and go away. And you see these cleaning stations all the time. I've seen them uh, sometimes, the, the, the fish is nervous and they'll, they'll take out a cleaning station. They'll turn it into a hors d'oeuvres, <laughs> okay. But normally, normally it's symbiotic so that they, the, the bigger fish don't bother the little guys that are cleaning them. Now these are, this is the, this is the same kind I just showed you, but out and about. And most of these, most of these uh, eels, this is an eel, are uh, three to four foot long in that range. Now here's a, these are bigger guys. This is a green moray. And I've seen green morays that are 12 feet long and perhaps a foot and a half in girth, okay, in, in deep water caves. And they're, they're not particularly aggressive. I personally have had them come out, big ones, you know, maybe a 10 footer, come out and you put your arm up and they'll swim right under your arm and, and just go through and they'll circle and come through again. And you can actually pet them. And what you're thinking there is, it's your game. If you want me to pet you, I'll certainly pet you. Because I'm certainly not going to get you mad. All right? And they're, they're amazing. So they, they, they aren't normally coming after people or anything else. But they, they can get quite big. You can see this one's, this one's. And they're night swimmers. They'll come out free swim at night quite often so that you see them. They're beautiful animals. Now, here's another case where... See the shrimp on this guy cleaning him off? And this is a, an eel in Indonesia. That these guys bury themselves in the sand with just their heads sticking up. So they're, what they're looking for is some food there, I think. And here's another one. It's pretty. Here. This is a spotted moray eel. It's in the Caribbean. And then I was lucky enough to get a photo of a, an albino spotted moray. Which are, which are quite rare. And this is a golden eel, but notice they're, all, they're always in a little niche. They're always in a little crack with their heads sticking out looking. That's their mode of behavior. That's what they've come to do. That's a, I, I like the look on his face. That's called a chain link eel. And here's a free swimmer. This was in Indonesia too. And they're, they're, they're beautiful animals. They really are. And they'll, they'll look like they're, you know, being mean, but what they're doing is they're, a lot of times they'll sit and do this, barracuda do this too, and what they're doing is they're just forcing water through their gills, right? So they're, they're, flapping, their, they're flapping their mouth, but it's just to get circulation through there. They're not trying to be menacing or anything, they're just breathing, right? Now, this is a very interesting fish. This is a ribbon eel, and so here's his mouth, okay? So this is a, a juvenile male ribbon eel, all right? They turn into this. And that's an adult male ribbon eel. When they get a little bit longer than this, a light goes on and they go all yellow and become a female ribbon eel, okay? So there are no juvenile female ribbon eels. So it's, it's a strange social scene 
but that's that's the way it goes. Uh, but it's kind of fascinating. Yeah. Uh, can you say the name of that? Well, say again. Can you say the name of that? This one here. R i b b o n. Like just like a ribbon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, why would they? <laughs> PC answer, huh? not bad. <laughs> no. Uh, now, this is a, a sharp tail eel, and some of these eels now that we're seeing are starting to look like sea snakes. Now, sea snakes are very toxic. They're, they're more toxic than, king co than cobras, right? But they're not fanged. They don't have fangs. They have teeth, so to get into you, they would have to they have to chew. They can't just inject venom. So if you have a good wetsuit on and gloves, they really aren't a problem, if you will. But you could see where this guy might like to look like a sea snake because other things will see it and say, well, we'll stay away from you. Okay, and that's exactly what happens. And here's another one that looks like a sea snake. That's an Indonesian one. And this is, a, uh, is just in here. You see a couple of scorpion fish here. And then this little guy, who's maybe a foot and a half long, is, that's a bamboo shark. So this is actually a shark. But again, you see the stripe behavior that's trying to make them kind of look like something that's they're not, something a little more dangerous. And here's, this is an eel, too, that's definitely trying to look or mimics a, a sea snake. Now, you know, you see that on, in, on the land, too. We see that around here that some snakes will, will be a coral snake and some snakes won't be but their coloration is similar for, as a protective measure for the ones that aren't toxic. All right, and these are garden eels. And these are little eels that are about a foot and a half long. And if, you, if you're careful, and notice how they're, see how they're all lined up? The current, the current is coming from right to left. So they line up into the current, and then they kind of filter feed what comes through them in the current. And here's a couple of, now if, you, if you're real careful on these, you can sneak up to them and grab underneath because they'll go down in, into the hole when uh, you come up to them. But you can get there and you can grab them and you can actually grab one in your hand and fiddle around with them and take his photograph and put them back. <laughs> okay, now, this next several pictures is just camouflaged by being in a group. In other words, what you do here is you get in a group that's so large that a predator that it's very hard for a predator to focus on one of you, right? So you, they get so big, it it's kind of confuses the senses of the predator. So you'll see these, and you, you'll see a lot of this in, in the ocean, of fishes that flock. And they, they swim synchronously, so you know, as the school moves, they all move together. It's really kind of neat. Okay. Okay. And these are ocean catfish. All right, and they're about a foot long, and you can see the, see the little whiskers, catfish whiskers on them. And they, they kind of build their own hidden system, if you will, in a way, the way they blend in. But again, they're, they're taking advantage of being in a big group. And now this one's a little better because they're, they're hidden in this, uh, I think it's a gorgonium, but I'm not sure what this is. But nevertheless, you can see how they hide in, in there. Okay, and then here's some blue tang. Now, you see how this guy is going to use subterfuge. These next things are going to try to look like something else. All right? So can you, can you see what, what's going on here? I'll give you a hint. It's called a, a four-eyed butterfly fish. Right? Yeah, go ahead. Um, they're making it so it looks like there's the eyes on the other side, so it'll try and bite up its tail into every face. That's right. So they do, they have, each of them has four eyes, if you will. And so the predator comes up and doesn't know which way they're going. So they've got a 50-50 chance of losing the tail rather than losing the head. <laughs> okay, so, so that's, that's kind of a neat adaptation there. Now this, this guy is, looks a lot like a stick, a bunch of sticks. And this is called a, an arrow crab, and it is a crab. And this body is here up and down. There's two of them in here. And then you have his legs down here. And he, he's sitting, notice the beautiful color of the sponge he's sitting in. These things are very iridescent. 
Now, could you think of a name? Could you, if you wanted to name this, what would you name it? Think of going out in the, in the lawn in the fall with a rake. <laughs> That's what it's called. They're called the leaf fish. And they'll sit there. They'll sit on the ground like this. And as current goes, they'll do this. They just kind of fall back and forth. And they look like a leaf. So people leave them alone because they don't think they are anything. And this is called a sea moth. Okay. And these guys just look like junk on the bottom of the sea. And there's two of them. And they'll skitter around and, and just swim in amazing patterns, but always on the move. Now here again, you can see what this, this is? There's the two horns. So this is a nudibranch, all right? And this nudibranch is, is kind of just looking like a, a twig on the bottom of, this, bottom of the sea. Again, notice the black lava. Okay, now this is uh, called a basket star. This is actually a starfish. And during the day, what you'll see is this. They're all balled up. But as soon as the sun goes down, it turns into night, bing, they open up like this and become a, a pretty active predator for things that are coming by. So again, during the daytime, see, you, you, you just, you'll just see a ball of, it looks like string almost, and then at night they open up. Uh, about that big, three, four feet across. Yeah. Smaller. <laughs> uh, about, about like a softball. About a softball side, maybe between a softball and a volleyball in that, in that range. Generally softballers. Okay, everybody got the fish? Well, well, <laughs> do you? Everybody got it? Where, where do you have it? Yeah. What color is it? Excellent. That's the fish. This is called a frog fish. And good spot, good spot. And there he is out. And you can see there's his mouth and one eye, fins and tail. And those aren't holes, those are just, those are spots. All right. And they come in a lot of different colors too. Here's this one, and you can see his eyes, mouth, fin, tail. Pink. <laughs> this one's yellow, okay. And they come, they're generally fairly small. Um, Again, about maybe baseball size, if you will. But then they can get up to softball size as well. And this black one, what I want to show you, there's one that's, see, fairly large. Now, what's neat about this guy, and this goes back to when you were asking me earlier about predator prey, right? Take a look at this guy, and here he is looking at you. And you can barely see it, but you see this? There's a stalk here. It looks like it has a little piece of cauliflower on it, all right? Let's see if I can get a better shot of that. There it is, here, all right? <laughs> okay, now, they use this definitely as bait. Now, they hide because you see, they're, I mean, they're practically invisible on the reef. But what they do is they'll wiggle this, this bait here, and that mouth is the fastest opening and shutting mouth in the whole animal kingdom, all right? So if something gets to here, to look at this, this mouth really works fast. So they're, they're a very effective predator on small things. Okay, okay so, so here's, here's another little Peterson shrimp, and he's coming over here to try to clean this seahorse. <laughs> now, they, in, in practice, out in the open, they, these guys hide very well. They really do. And the reason they do, they're hard to focus on because they've got kind of fur. And this is a, this is a, a, a seahorse, and they see they have a prehensile tail. They'll hook onto something. And they travel, they swim a little bit, but they'll travel with current. All right, so let's take a look at, take a look at this one. And you see the fur and the, the tail. Okay, and here's... 
Again, one that's out a little bit clearer. And you see how they, they blend beautifully in, in coral. Right here. And here's one that's out there. And these guys get to be oh, a, a foot long. Some of these get to be a foot long. Typically, the ones in the Caribbean are more like three or four inches long. Now, this is neat. You see, see this thing here? That's just a little pointer, right? So you get a, size, a sense of what the size of this thing is. It's just a little pointer. But what you can see, if you really look carefully, are two eyes here, here, and a prehensile tail here. And these are called, these are pygmy seahorses. And these are no more, these are between a half and three quarters of an inch long when they're fully grown. Right? Now, they weren't known for long because they only live in this coral that looks just like them. And a collector in Indonesia took some of this coral home and put it in an aquarium. And he came out a couple of days later and he noticed these teeny little seahorses swimming around in the aquarium. And that's how they were discovered. So they were discovered completely accidentally. It's neat to dive with, with guides in, in Indonesia because these, these uh, men and women can find these things. It's amazing how, how good they are at finding things. Because, you know, they're making a living doing it, and it's a, it's, a, it's a very valued talent. Here again, here you can see the eyes better on this guy. That's one. And then here's the tail of the other. He's back over here. Now, if you straighten out a fish, a, a, a seahorse, you get a pipe fish. So the same family, except that these guys don't have the prehensile tail. Okay, and so you can see what they're looking like. They look just like a stick. You see his, there's his uh, mouth. Here's another one. And here again, you see we've got a pipe fish here that's looking like a sea snake, right? Very common. Okay, everybody got the fish? You have them? Okay. It's right here. And that's a pipe fish. All right. There. Okay. Mm hmm. Yep, there's his nose and tail. And you can tell too by the angle of the, of the uh, pectoral fins on these things. But these are, here's a nice one of a different color, but notice how they pick things that look like them to hide in. They're very specific to different plants. And here's two more. And there's two more swimming here. And finally, this, this was a picture of somebody a friend took of me trying to hide in my office in the National Science Foundation in Washington. So I think you can see where I was there, right there. <laughs> okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed this, and it's just a, a cruise. You see how many neat things there are to, to see underwater, and it's ever-changing. Uh, there's a lot of stress on the ocean now, as I'm sure you know, but it's a, it's a wonderful world to get involved in, and I encourage all of you to Get involved in that world if you can. So thank you very much.